pampered spirits.
Did you, what, what is the age of this individual? Twelve. What's, what's the individual's birthday? I don't know their exact birthday. Is the individual a male or a female? Again, you could do, use some deductive reasoning there and I wouldn't answer that. could compromise future investigations. Do you, do you have a photo of this individual that you're able to introduce into evidence today? Um, I don't know if I would, would that mean that you would have access and the public would have access to yes, that it's photo? Called, it's called evidence in the public. You're an investigator, right? You're trained in hearings. <laughs> it's evidence. Do you I have any? I, I, I apologize. It was my intention of badger. I was trying to be emphatic, I but maybe I overstepped. Yeah. I would say no then for the same reason. Okay. Thank you. All right. But in your opinion, you think this individual does look reasonably their age? In my assessment, yes. And that's all the evidence we have regarding that is your, your judgment? I would suppose so. The operative that you used that day, does the operative have any facial hair? No. Did they have any facial hair at the time of the inspection? No. Were they wearing any glasses? No. Eyeglasses? No. Sunglasses? No. Were they wearing a hat? No, nothing that would obscure their face. Okay. Um, I just have a question or two of uh, uh, Elizabeth. You are, you are on duty today in question, correct? Correct. And you're familiar with the facts as described by Inspector Bouvenet? Yes. And you are the person that uh, the purchase was made from, correct? Yes. Did you have, an, how long have you worked in the liquor store? I have been there for four years, two months plus. Have you received tips training? I have. Okay. In your estimation, how did the, what did the age of this individual appear to be? 30. Any question in your mind about that? There's not. Okay. And how, how would you describe this person that you believe in to be certain? Uh, tall, um, light to gray hair. What's the hair color of the person? Brown. Thank you. Uh, that's all the questions I have. If I could be heard on disposition. One moment. Uh, Mr. Mark, you were there that yes, day. Yes, I was there as well, yes. And you received the inspection form. I, I guess, manager of record, signed the inspection form. Did you observe the sale? I did not. I was working on something for a customer. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, in conclusion, it would be the licensee's cont contention that the evidence, the evidential burden, has not been established yet to warrant a finding of the sale of an underage person. The commission of the, of the investigative staff has available to it the individual who partic directly participated in these sales has failed to produce that individual, will not produce a photo of that individual, doesn't allow the commission an attempt to assess whether or not that individual complies with the checklist guideline around reasonable age. Similarly, there is no direct evidence as to the age of this individual. It's reported by the inspector that he reviewed the license. Uh, well, I take that back. I'm not even certain that that was his testimony. And this may sound technical, and it doesn't uh, change or alter the facts, but the checklist and the guidelines exist for a reason. Uh, and I would suggest in the case of a licensee that has no record, who has a TIPS-trained staff person, who generally believed the person was of age, but the failure to comply with the guidelines in this case should cause some concern for the commission, and I would respectfully suggest that a finding of not responsible be entered in this case. I'm sorry, can you tell me which guideline you're saying is not complied with? The photo of an underage person should be attached to the report. Does it say the report, or does it say to this? Should, be, should the, a photo of the underage person should be taken and attached to the information requested in number six. And the underage person should sign a release. The number six then goes on to say an underage person should sign a release. The underage person and an ABCC investigator or any other law enforcement officer should also sign a data copy of the report. Ask the inspector to provide a copy of the report. He's not done so. Excuse me.
he investigated now produces oh, I'm sorry. That's evidence. A, that's a copy of the same copy of that. Oh, thank you. Is it the same copy? I think he's reading the ABCC guidelines. Yeah. yeah. We're reading our guidelines. Oh, okay. Uh, and I recognize that. And I'd say there's no way to credibly ascertain whether or not guideline number two regarding whether the individual reasonably looked their age. That's evidence that's germane to the determination by the commission. Should have been allowed for the licensee to examine, cross-examine and confront. The fundamental element of due process is missing here. Well, it's a he said, she said situation, is it not? Because you have well, your we court know testifying you. that the person did not look at uh, their That's age, correct. and then you have the investigator saying that they did look their age. So it's a, it's a question for us to determine who's more credible on that regard. Well, in fairness, Madam Chair, the best evidence rule would suggest the best way to determine that is through the live uh, examination of the individual. So now it becomes speculation. And the, but that's best you know, evidence in you court. Know, practical concern, uh, Officer Rubinek. Um, you, you didn't state this clearly, but if your concerns that if you provided the photograph for public dissemination, then you could never use that individual, that covert operative again, right? Correct. Anything else? Nothing else. Thank you. Other than to emphasize the lack of any disciplinary history for this particular license. Okay. You didn't go into this, but I, I am concerned. I mean, I think this is, again, as I said with every other case with this regard, this is a huge public safety violation. And although your counsel has honed in on the events of that day, I haven't heard a single thing from you in terms of what you've done to yeah. try and make sure that this does not happen again. So I'd like to actually okay. hear some of that. We have completely changed our process. We're no longer, if they look old enough, are they allowed to not have an ID? They must provide an ID. Um, we have scheduled everybody to do online tip training. We've already done that at the request to the license rules, but that will be further encouraged. And we have um, put up some signs asking people to have their IDs ready. And we make sure that our ID scanner is up to date and we use ID science. Okay. What was the policy in place prior to the incident? Prior to the incident, if they looked over 30 or so in their judgment, then you wouldn't necessarily have to have some ID. And I realize that that is probably not the best thing in light of people that can look significantly older than they are. Um, with that said, um, you know, I think the, whether this individual looked their age or not, I did not find the testimony of the licensee credible. Um, you know, the licensee said light hair and the person has brown hair. Um, so I find a violation, um, and again, because of everything, and the, consistent with our previous votes, I would vote for a two-day suspension. Thank you. Thank you.